Okay, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and this is part eight now, I believe, of the build of this lovely Chieftain Mark 10 from Meng. And I'm building this as part of the group build over on Black Life of Model Works. I must get some pictures on there. Today is July the 17th, 2023. Um, yesterday you saw part three go up, so as you can see, I'm well ahead in the build in real time. So, um, just doing some finishing up small sort of minor parts and going through and looking at painting and stuff. I can't remember if I pointed this out, but there's something you can read in here, in this beautiful book, which is said to be by Phil. And you can read in here about the painting and they were all painted exactly the same. Okay. Um, every camouflage had a little lapse of the picture. Da, 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 da. It does say in here that every vehicle was, I've read it somewhere, every vehicle camouflage was exactly the same so that the the enemy couldn't actually monitor and see how many tanks we had. So um, that's why they're all done the same. But what's very strange, if you look here, you can see, if I showed you this already, I'm sorry, just fast forward until you see me put the book down. But, um, you can see on here, the rear of the turret, here we go, the rear of the turret here is grey, white, grey, and you can see it's got white on the side here and grey here, but when you see these guys actually painting the tank here, it's completely different. See what I mean? Like here, the, the spool is white, there it's grey, very strange. So um, that's what I'm saying. I need to start planning about what I'm going to put on, what's going to get in the way. So like, for instance, if I put this unit, this unit goes on here, just there. I need to draw the holes out a bit. OK, I've got a mask right next to it. So I think I'm going to leave that off until I've done one colour, masked it, and then I can glue it down. Um, certain things, like I've said before, I'm going to try and get as sharp lines as I can. These were hand painted. Apparently there were laws um, in Berlin at the time. Uh, about spray painting and cat and fumes and everything so that's why they were all brush painted and they were apparently kept very very nice so I've done some fitting of some clear parts and got the masks so there's a, uh, a lookout you can see there on the um, on the main cupola whatever you call it commander's hatch uh, we've got the headlights here we've got another little lookout thing here that's obviously some sort of forward looking thing um, and there's that unit there which goes on top of the turret as well. So there's lots of little lookout hatches which we've done. Um, I've painted these blue. I'm not even sure. It says in the instructions to paint them blue. I'm not even sure if it's correct. But what I've done with this, I've painted the back black so it's a very, very dark colour. I think when everything's sort of down, I think there's lenses and stuff in behind here and it should be quite interesting. But they've just given you this piece of flat clear, which is absolutely fine. Um, so we've done this light here and masked up and everything now painted it all black um, and I need to get the, the resin parts from the beautiful resin antenna set that Mark sent me thank you very much Mark I need to get those bits of resin out and glue one on there and one on a box that goes on the side of the tank so we get on with those or I could fit the plastic ones I'm not sure I'll have a look in a minute plastic ones are there come here plastic ones are there Resin ones are there. Um, they look a lot more realistic, don't they? look a lot more. When you look at this picture here, proportionally, they look a lot more realistic than that one. You've also got the big bulge at the top and that doesn't. So we won't use them. We will use the resin ones. So we'll get them off, sand them flat, draw them out. Um, we'll do that in a minute. Looking at the headlights, in the instructions, it shows you in here, in the instructions to it's right near the beginning, isn't it? It shows you fitting the headlights and it says make two here. So you've got one black lens and one... Um, are they telling you to paint that blue? Come here. Oh. Mm, 102. Yeah, they're telling you to paint the headlights blue. You see, they're telling you to paint everything blue and it's not right. I haven't seen a single picture of one with blue headlights. When I mean, you look here, the headlights are clear. You look in the book, 
Those headlights are clear. Those headlights are clear. They're not supposed to be blue. So there we are. But the other thing is they're telling you to make two. Well, if you make two, you'll make two the same. But they've got to be both black headlights inner and the clear lights outer. So make sure you get that right as well. So the instructions leave a little bit to be desired in a certain cut of certain areas, but um, they're far, far better than what we've had recently, I can assure you. So I don't know how these lenses are going to fit. I haven't dry fitted them yet. So what I'm going to do is fit these in with some crystal clear. It looks like they might be a nice tight fit, so I might be able to just push them in. They've got a little nubbin on them to get them orientated, which I really don't understand. I don't know if you can see that on there. There's a little tiny nubbin on there to go into a little slot in the upper end of the head, upper side of the headlight. But why on earth would you need to orientate these? It's just crazy. So I'm going to do these off camera under the magnifier so I don't damage any in. And I'll come back. All I'll do is I'll put a drop of white glue in there, or I'll probably push them in and then put some white glue around and then wipe it off, wipe it off with a cloth or a cotton bud. So I'll see you in a sec. Wow, that was fun. But we got them in, got them masked, and we got them painted. So uh, all looking lovely indeed. Um, I assembled up the machine gun. So that's all looking lovely. I'm not sure if we're going to fit that or not. We shall see. And we got basically bits and pieces. Look at these baskets when they're painted up. Look how gorgeous they are. Really, really beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So fine, so lovely, really, really nice, really beautiful. So, uh, yeah, and there's the other one there. Lovely, beautiful little kit. And these um, smoke dischargers, whatever they're called, um, drilled them out to make them look a bit more accurate. So. Drilled them out 1.6 mil, I think it was. So they look a bit better now. So, uh, yeah, a little bit more black painting to do. And then, um, and then I think we start looking at the camouflage. I've also picked up these antennae that um, Mark got me. Thank you very much, Mark. Very, very good of you. I did a review of them. These are the um, uh, Scorpion Miniature Models ones. SMM3527. They are stunning. Go back and you'll see I had a look. I did a review of them. Um, I think I called it Prezies from Mark or something. So I've got the bases off of the uh, poor block. So here are the antenna bases here. So I've got them off the poor block. I drilled a 0.6 hole through and then this is 1.1 and I'm going to glue those onto the actual tank itself. So we'll remove It'd be easier if I took the turret off, wouldn't it? Let's take the turret off and then we just remove the paint. Remember, if you're using super glue and there's paint around, it's best to remove the paint so you're not just gluing your whatever it is to the paint. Saying that, this stuff here, the VMS Black Thin, does tend to uh, dissolve paint, so that's cool. So we'll put a drop here on our Pringles lid. And then we can just apply a drop. That holds off centre, isn't it? We'll have to play with that one. Apply a drop there. There should be plenty to hold it on there. And then we can put it on. So that's that one glued in place. Now the other one's going to go on one of these boxes, which I've put back in the curry sauce tray. I think that's it there, isn't it? Be careful because there's a lot of flimsy parts in here. Yeah, it's going to go onto that one there. So I'm going to move that hole over. So we'll just dig away the resin so that it goes over the central pin and then remove some paint just 
just like so, and then we'll put a drop of the super glue on there. Drop our base on, and then just eye it out to make sure it's kind of central. There we go. So that's that one glued on. So, um, unfortunately, this one's got one of these, if you remember, it's got squashed. It almost looks like it's been, both sides have been squashed if you look at it, unfortunately. But, uh, never mind. like it's been picked up while the resin is still soft. I know because I've done it myself. There we are. So that can all get painted black now along with the front of the smoke dischargers. And as I say once we've done that then I think we're ready to start looking at um, painting. So um, I've, I've been told off as well, apparently um, that what goes on here is not return rollers, they're track guides and the pieces that go on the side are not side skirts, even though men called them side skirts in the instructions and on their demo sheet, apparently they're called bazooka boards or something, but I should probably keep calling them side skirts because that's the word I'll remember. Um, at the end of the day it's a plastic model, it's not a real tank. so whatever right so uh, I shall um, push on with getting these bits of bits of black paint done and then I'll come back I need to also decide I've got to look closely at my uh, references I'm not sure if I'm going to paint this thing green first and then we'll have some green bits showing but um, looking at these pictures in here it looks like the British crews were very very um, thorough with their paintwork I mean, you, you know, you've got close-up photos like this. There is no green showing whatsoever. They did a fantastic job of them. Um, very, very nice indeed. So, you can't even see, I mean, even here under the turtle, I can't see any green. There may be green there, but I doubt they got in there and painted that. So that may be, that may be an area to have a bit of green. So... We shall see. I'll um, do some more research, get some black painting done, and then I'll be back again. Right, so they're painted now. So you can see that resin uh, antenna base is lovely. Very, very nice. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so uh, I've been doing a bit of work off camera, and I've, I've decided to get these fitted because I thought I'm going to get them primed up and everything. So um, I've fitted those on, and they do fit very, very nicely. The only difference is I fitted them with magnets, so um, we can take them off and put them back on. And bearing in mind, let's get that pushed up. There we go. Bearing in mind, we don't have any, we don't have the little supports in here yet that go onto these little tabs here. They're actually very surprisingly very very solid when you think how small the magnets are. I've used. It's very surprising. I mean. Okay, but you're not going to pick the model up and shake it like that. Plus, they're going to have the side supports on, so I might put another couple of magnets in there or something. But um, yeah, very, very pleased with that. What I've used, I've got a little stash of magnets. So you get these on Amazon for pennies. Um, and these are two millimeters diameter by half a millimeter deep. So I've just drilled some two millimeter holes in there, about 0.8 deep, uh, to allow for the cone on the front of the drill, and then just super glued them in so you can see. These magnets are in there, and um, I'm not sure if these blades are magnetic, are they? Yeah, so as you can see, holds them in there like that. Um, and then in the actual, um, I can't remember what it's supposed to be called, bazooka plates, is it? Side shields, whatever. Um, there, um, what I've done is cut some slots in these pieces where they actually mount and then this is from a trumpeter you can see there MiG-29 
um, a kit that I binned, and it's um, it's hinges. They, they give you a metal rod, and you put these inside the, and it gives you metal hinges. They're awful things because they're all just floppy and everything. But it's um, it's a stainless steel, so just cut little pieces of that off, and then file the back. You know, rough it out. You can see I filed it before I cut it. You can see the filing marks there. Um, file it up to roughen it, and then stick it into those grooves. And those grooves are about 0.5 deep, 0.4 deep. And then just come along with a file, and um, just with a file, just lightly file over the top of them. Just make sure they're all leveled out. And then you know your your side skirt will sit on the nice and flush then. Just like so. So yeah, once you've got those little supports on the side, I think they're going to be lovely. So I am going to go and now repair, <coughs> repair yeah, easy for you to say, uh, fill these little areas now where I've scalloped it out. Um, repair and fill those so they're all nice and done. And, uh, and that'll be that. So um, I should get that done. And then I'll come back and I think we're going to be starting looking at getting some white paint down. Which is the exciting bit. And there we are. <clears throat> there is one Meng 135th scale Chieftain Mark 10. And isn't it lovely? So I've painted the, you can see here, you can see here the paint's not there. This is where I scratched it with the file. But you can see on the tops here where I fitted those metal strips. There now, there's one under there. There's one under there, I think. And there's one under there. And they're all invisible now. So that's pretty cool. I've painted it where the magnets are on the side. You can hardly see them, but we can still just put our um, skirt on like that. There we go. Job done. So there's our tank. There's all our bits and pieces in there for the upper hull. We've got all our wheels in there. Somebody did say, why have you painted them green? I did explain I want to have some green showing through like it's chipped or not painted properly or whatever. Little bits and pieces, Grigley's, I've got some fire extinguishers, there's little brackets that go on the back, and there's some little tiny hooks that go on the side there, which will go in at the end. Tow ropes, they'll all get painted and fitted later on. And obviously we've got our tracks, which I don't think I'll be using now, because we have some on the way from Poland. Um, so there we are. So like I say, what I've got to do now is sit down and really look at this, and think about how I'm going to go about painting it. You know which bits to paint first because obviously the best way to go is white then grey then brown but there could be areas like here if you look here you've got the white the grey and the brown on the top of the turret but it's going to be easier to mask here and here or sorry here than it is to mask here so I'll probably do here, I'll probably do the brown first and then go in with the white afterwards because it would be easier to put a piece of tape there and there than have it here and here. So it would be, be okay there but here would be a problem. So it's little bits and pieces like that so I've got to really look at what I'm doing and make sure that I'm happy with them. Um, happy also with what's on here because I've just noticed here that grey is going beyond that toolbox there and in reality when we look at the real photographs it doesn't so if we're going to be fussy about accuracy we need we may as well see if we can get it right so i think what i'll do is not use the main instructions i think i'll use the book and use that as my guide because as you can see that gray there like i just showed you you see that gray there the end of it, the back end of the grey is parallel with the end of the toolbox. So, yeah. So that's that's one big may have got may have got wrong. So um, I think what I'll do is use this book for my guide, and uh, and get this camouflage down. But as I say, it's going to take a lot of thinking, and how we're going to go about it, and where you know what bits we're going to glue on and what bits we're not. So um, I think it's quite obvious that the baskets will get painted separately. That one's basically going to fit there. Like so, it almost drops into place to be honest. It's such a good fit. That's going to sit there. 
you can see it just stays there on its own. It's totally gorgeous that basket. Really, really nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful model, guys. It really is. I know a lot of you have bought one um, on the back of my review and everything, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Other than that piece of photo etch there is a bit daft. Okay, but you can see there that it is possible to do. And I did tell you in part seven, was it, I think, how to do it. Um, and the tracks with the holes in the side. But hey, if that's the only two things wrong with the kit with this many parts, then we ain't got much to worry about. But give that a go, guys, with the, the magnets. It's not difficult. It just takes a bit of care, a bit of time, and think about what you're doing. And just don't go tearing in like a butcher because you'll... We'll start to ruin things. Can't get that one to stay on now, look. That's because the camera's on. But, um, there we are. So, right, I'll see you in a minute when I've decided what I'm going to do. Uh, we're only on like 20 minutes, so I can't really call the video a day yet. Um, in fact, yes, I will. I'll call it a day here because this is where we now stop and completely change and we're going into the painting phase we have been doing the building phase and all the assembly and everything so i think i will call it all day and i'm going to get these um i've got those marks i need to sand that on the inside of there you'll also notice i fill all the ejector pin marks in there which is cool um oh and if it's if you see water in here you're not going mad there is water in here um what i found was where i clamped those fenders in to get them straight i actually pulled them up that way so when I put a rule along here they weren't straight so what I've done is I've run some hot water over them and then bent them down so that they're straight so that when we put the shields on the side skirts the bazooka plates whatever you have to bloody call them there we go so they go on like that and they fit nice and straight across the top when I originally fitted them you may have noticed actually when I first showed you and fitted you may have noticed that the front was sticking up, so uh, happy with that now. Right, so I'm going to call that a day for this one. I'm, I'm sorry it's been a short one, but um, we've got nothing left to do. So that's it. Paint, final assembly, job done. And I've got to wait for those tracks to come through. So um, I'll see you all soon for part nine. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that because you'll be able to watch me do a little bit of spraying. And it'll probably be a lot of talking, a lot of why I've done this and why I've done that. And maybe help some of you guys, maybe the less experienced models out there, tackle something like this. Because believe me, that is a major, major masking job. And uh, I'm hoping I can pull it off. We shall see. Right. See you for part nine. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Hello, everyone. Right. Welcome back. And here we are now with part nine of the build of this uh, chieftain. This is the Meng. Chieftain Mark 10, one of the nicest kits I've ever built. It is absolutely gorgeous, guys. I suggest you go and get one. It's lovely. Um, so I finished up by, with part eight by saying I'd finished the build. Uh, basically, what I meant was not completely finished the build, but I finished the build part of the um, of the, 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 the sequence, if you like. And um, <clears throat> straight away, that was a lie because I haven't fitted these, these uh, supports for the side skirts. So we're going to fit these now. If you are worried about which goes where and everything because if you remember when you build up these suspension units it's all a bit sort of bits of differences in that and the only difference is if you look here if you can see this one here this slot where it goes in it's like an L so you've got a vertical and then the horizontal points to the right and then on these two it's like a backwards L but it points to the left and then on here you've got one L and two backwards L the same so that's how they go in. And when you look at the ends of them where they fit, you can see on here, very difficult. I should have done showing you this before I painted it. There's like a leg sticking out. So that leg sticks out to the left. That one's out to the left and that one's out to the right. So it's really quite obvious how they go. So I would suggest putting them in with extra thin and then manipulating them to get them to line up because on the back of the side skirts, we've got these little lumps that are going to kind of sit in just like that and they're going to it's going to help support them um because the magnets that will hold them the magnets do hold them in the uh, vertical position which is fine 
and they'll stay on there. But if I start doing that, obviously they fall off. And I don't think having them on is going to help. We could actually add some magnets onto these, but I probably won't bother because the thing is, this is going to go in a cabinet. It's not going to be going on the scammel. I can tell you that because I want to have the machine gun on it. I want to have the antenna on there that Mark sent me. Um, and I don't want to have it with the, the, the turret turn round with the, um, the barrel lock on because the barrel lock is moulded in the open position. So I'd rather have it as a display piece on its own. I think it's got enough character with that paint job to make it look good. So what we're going to do now is just get those fitted on and then we're going to start the bit you've all been wanting to see and we're going to start getting some paint down on it and this is going to be fun. So uh, watch this space and watch me cock it up. <laughs> So I'll see you in a minute once I've got these on. You don't need to watch me glue these on. They're, they're very, very straightforward. And, um, and they're probably going to get knocked off. But I have to put them on because I'm going to paint all of this under here green. The whole underside would have been green. It looks like the paint carried on here back to this weld seam. And on the front, I think it went down to here. They were very, very meticulous. Typically, typically British. Very, very meticulous about how these were painted. And when you look at them, they are all extremely tidy and beautifully done there's no there's no tatty lines there's no tatty edges there's nothing not you know not meeting up or anything they are gorgeous so uh we've got to try and get the same so um i'll get these on and i'll come back and so hour later glue's gone off we fitted these and as you can see i've got the issue now if i hold it that way around you can see that this skirt is a bit floppy what we need to do is get a magnet in there. I've done this side already and as you can see this skirt is not floppy. It only needs one, one magnet in the middle. Um, the other thing is now that hangs nice and vertical. Okay this one's nice and vertical. This one's, I don't know if you can see it, but that one's kind of flared out. You can see I can push it in so we do need to put a magnet in there. So I've done this one and I'll show you how I've done it. The other you know, the good thing is look on this side, on this side. So there we go and all I've done is fitting a magnet on that middle support there and we've got a piece of steel let into the side skirt so I'll show you how I've done it let's put this one back on to protect those little nubbins that I've just fitted because they're going to be asking to be snapped off so first things first I'm going to I'm not going to fit that I'll do the magnet on the side first so on here you can see we've got a cut out and that is about 0.75 mil deep so I'm going to come along with my snips and I'm going to cut cut some plastic out of it just like so and then cut the sides away and then cut that side away and then with a 400 grit sanding stick I should be able to sand it without it snapping off in fact what I'll do is trim it with the knife so if you want to fit magnets on your chieftain or probably any other tank this is how to go about it if you're not sure what to do the magnets I've got are two millimeters diameter and they're half a millimeter thick so you can get them on on Amazon you can get them pretty much anywhere just gonna trim some more of that away trim some more of that away there we go and then using the sanding stick come in and just sand until it's all white plastic Particularly my knee, I've got a spider on my leg or something, I expect. And there we go, so that's that cleaned up. Right, so what I'm going to do now is grab one of my magnets, see I've got them here. What I'm going to do is, first of all, sand. Sand the magnet to give it a bit of a key for the super glue to work with. Okay, so that's that done. And then grab it with a pair of tweezers and pull it away from the rest. There we go, so we've got one. And then that magnet can then roll around onto the side of the tweezers with the sanded face exposed. Then I'm going to take some of my thin black super glue. To drop in here. I'm putting a lot in because I'm going to be using a lot on the side skirt and then what we're going to do is just get some of that, put it on here 
and then come along with the magnet and put it in position and slide slide the tweezers off if it'll let me. That's the beauty of this glue, it doesn't dry fast. And because the camera's on, it's gonna play bastards, isn't it? Here we go, look at this. I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these now, all off camera, and this is the first one I've had a problem with. Just slide off, go on. There we go. Blimey. Not touching that with anything metal again. Just going to slide it down. Get it into roughly in the right position. And unfortunately when the model's on display we're going to see that magnet but I don't think it will notice. I mean I don't think this is particularly accurate either so. There we go, so that can be left to dry. You can see that's on there, sort of roughly placed in the middle. So I know now that that one lines up with that raised peg there. So what I can do is, with my tool, I can here I can scratch out where I want to put the piece of metal. Remove that, and then in here I've got a drill, I think it's 0.7, the diameter doesn't matter, and I've set it to 0.5 deep. So you can probably see there it's just sticking out of the end, and what we can do is with that drill, it's come along and just drill holes, and it won't go any more than 0.5 deep. It doesn't need to be in any particular pattern, just keep it roughly within the area. If you go outside, it doesn't matter because we're going to be filling it all in with super glue anyway. I'm just going to remove that raised bit of plastic there. And I'm just going to drill a load of holes. In fact, I think I might put this up as part A, B, and call it actually finishing the build. And there we go. And then, with a curved blade, or with a straight blade, in fact I'll use a scriber. Let's just use my old Tamiya scriber here. I'm just going to scribe a line down there. It's got a rule because it's going into the holes. This does not to be, to be tidy, scientific or anything. You're just making a line. Okay, and then over the top here, just like so. There we are. And then we can just, with our knife, just cut away the plastic. Should be going away from my fingers rather than towards them. Just cut away the plastic up to that scribe line until those drilled holes disappear. You can see You can see remnants of the drilled holes there on the right hand side. So we just keep doing this and then we know we've removed something like 0.5 of the plastic. Like this. Just scrape it until those holes disappear. There we go, and then I'm going to come along with my rule and my scriber, and I'm going to put it up against these other two lugs that sit in those supports, and then just make a line there and make a line there, and that way I know where the bottom edge of those comes is where the steel plate needs to go. So I've got a piece of stainless steel fret from an old trumpeter kit. So I can grab my your on PE cutters. Just cut that. Now that needs to be flattened out. So I'm going to put it 
in fact we'll use a pair of pliers just put it between a pair of pliers and flatten it out that's better and then I should be able to sand this on the end of my finger sand one side to clean it up and give it something for the super glue to key on and then we're going to place that in sanded side down and it's fallen straight into the right area where I want it and then I will grab, grab my super glue and the applicator and just put some super glue down next to it so it capillaries under get those tweezers out of the way just like so let's get that out of the way it's a mess on the bench just go around and fill in all the area around it like so get that out of the way grab some accelerator and then wait for that to dry and then I'll sand it flat and then I'll come back okay so that's all dry now and uh, I've put another couple of applications on just to build it up and all we're going to do is now with a nice flat sanding stick gently sand it don't go hack it into it if you don't want to be thinning out this area of the skirt and gently sand it until it's all level and we'll start to see the, the white plastic coming through you can see they've got a bit of metal coming through so we're going to have to remove some metal by the look of it but that's fine that's okay the metal is about 0.4 thick so we've got plenty there we can sand away and the sanding stick makes no problem at all with sanding it away it just means we'll have to be sanding a bit longer that's all stick off and just keep sanding until it's all nice and flat we'll go along the bottom edge and get that all squared off and obviously now we've thinned out the, the skirt in this area so we have to be careful not to bend it or it'll snap properly quite easily because there's also an ejector pin mark right above it so We've probably got a whole half the skirt is thin in that area. It's just super glue keeping it all together. So I'm going to turn the stick over to a new side. You can see there are pieces of steel coming through. It's still not quite flush. I should have gone a little bit deeper with the groove, I think. Again, that's the first one that's gone wrong because the bloody camera's on. So when I go wrong, guys, it's your fault, okay? remember that and I think that is as good as we're going to get it for now just keep sanding it what we'll be careful of is not thinning out the whole area I've got my finger behind it so the sander is basically pushing in that area there we go I think that'll do us so you can see now we've got no shiny We've got no shiny super glue which means we've sanded it all away and it's all blended nice and flat and now we can come along and we can line up those tabs along the top and we have on the skirt we have these lugs here to push up against the bottom of the mug guard so just put that on like that push it up and you can see We've basically got a magnet there, a magnet there, and a magnet there. And now we've got one here as well. And you can see that is very much, you know, it falls off if I pull it away too far, but it's very much on there. It's not coming off. So that's that one like that. And now we can display all that beautiful suspension and our lovely tracks and everything. And we can see all the green green paint and that apparently is the um, poo hole that's where they chuck their bags of waste out <laughs> somebody told me it was the SH1T hole so there we are we now have a chieftain with nice vertical skirts that we can put on they're put on and take offable as they said in the gas adverts on and offable wasn't there or something so there we are that's how that's how I've done it so I'm going to call it a day there I think and I'm going to call this part 8a actually finishing the build but it's another short one isn't it it's only about what is it 10 minutes long 20 minutes long so um 
I'll see you all for part nine. <laughs> Sorry to mess you about because I really want you know to, to have a sort of video where we actually make a start on the painting because I know that's what a lot of you want to see. So I'll do I'll get that one out to you very very shortly and uh, you'll enjoy it very much I think. You can watch me mess it all up <laughs> which I will probably do even with the camera on. I'm not one of those that messes up and then turns the camera off and uh, comes back and says look how easy that was as you've just seen me doing with those magnets. That's the first one I've done on camera and it's the first one I've messed up. So I'm not really messed up, the first one that gave me some problems. So there we are, all done. Lovely. Right, I'll see you for part nine. Thanks for watching guys. Bye for now. Oh, and if you wonder what I've been using, VMS Flexi 5K CA Black Thin available from Premium Mobbies. The sander was a 400 grit Infini, it's called a Matador stick, again from Premium Hobbies. And the magnets I just got from Amazon, all sorts of different sizes. As I say, they were two millimeter diameter, 0.5 thick. So um, always get yourself a nice lot of thin ones and get some big ones as well for big heavy stuff. But uh, well worth doing. I mean, you could put magnets in every one of these positions if you wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary. They're not going anywhere. So, there we are. Right, thank you for watching. Bye for now.